Hi class, we are here today to create a mind map of ANOVA in order to summarize the whole chapter and also to help you revise for your final exam. Well, maybe this is not a mind map but more towards a train map. Anyway, so there are two parts of ANOVA. The first is when we have equal samples and the next is when we have unequal samples. For each part, we have discussed the hypothesis testing and we have also discussed the confidence intervals. So let's go on the details of each subsection. First of all, when do we conduct the analysis of variance or ANOVA? When there are more than two independent groups of subjects or items. For one-way ANOVA, we only consider one factor. Now, let's imagine that we have three levels of treatment or three groups and that we have four observations. One, two, three, four. So, K would be 3 and N would be 4. The number of data units would be 3 multiplied by 4 which is 12. So class, as we've discussed before, the null and alternative are always constants in ANOVA. So when we have 3 groups or 3 treatment levels, our null hypothesis would be mu1 is equals to mu2 equals to mu3. So if we have more treatments, then it could be up to mu k. And the alternative is always at least 2 means are not equal. And We've discussed this after the statement of your null and alternative hypothesis. We would calculate your test statistics. To illustrate the process of calculating your test statistics, it would be easier for us if I create your ANOVA table. So we start with the treatments or I write it as A and then the error. And finally, the total. To calculate the sum of squares of the total, we take the sum of squares of each data point. So in this case, would be this value square plus this value square up to the last value minus y dot dot. So how do you get y dot dot? You have to calculate the summation of observations for each treatment, which would be your y i dot, and then take the grand average to find your y dot dot. Square the value divided by capital N and the sum of squares of treatment would simply be 1 over number of observations multiplied by the sum of the squares of y i dot minus y dot dot over N and the sum of squares of the error would simply be SST minus SSA. Next would be the calculation of the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom of the treatment would be K minus 1. Degrees of freedom of the error would be N minus K. 
and the degrees of freedom of the total would be this value plus this value or n minus 1. And to calculate the values of the mean square, so MSA would be SSA over the degrees of freedom and MSE would be SSE over the degrees of freedom. And finally, our test statistics would simply be MSA over MSE plus the rejection region is a constant where we have the F distribution and the rejection region is always on our right hand side. Okay, and the critical value here is F alpha, the degrees of freedom for treatment, which is K minus 1. Comma, the degrees of freedom of error, which is n minus k. And next, to find the confidence interval for a treatment mean. So for example, mu i, we simply take y bar i dot, where y bar could be calculated by taking y i dot divided by the number of observation plus minus d alpha over 2 k multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by the mean square error divided by the number of observation and if you want to find the confidence interval for the difference between two means, for example, mu i minus mu j, we take the values of y bar i dot minus y bar j dot plus minus t alpha over 2 n minus k multiplied by 2 MSE over the number of observation. For data with unequal samples, for example, again, we have a factor with three levels of treatment. But different number of observations. For example, for the first treatment, we have four observations. And the second one, we only have three observations. And the third, only two observations. Then we also have the number of observations per each treatment, which is four, three, and 2. And again, we could also find the summation of data points for each treatment and this gives us the grand average or y dot dot. Generally, the formula would be the same as in ANOVA with equal samples. So we have a constant null and alternative hypothesis. The formula for SST or the sum of squares of total is exactly the same. However, the formula for the sum of squares of treatment or SSA is a bit different. So SSA would be summation of yi dot square divided by the number of sample for each treatment minus y dot dot square over n. In this case, k would be 3 and the number of data points 
you would have to add up the number of observations per treatment, which is 9. And so we could calculate the degrees of freedom from the formula given here, the MSA and MSE, and the test statistics as usual. And finally, class, we have the confidence interval for the treatment mean for ANOVA with unequal samples. So the confidence interval for treatment I would be Y bar I dot plus minus T alpha over 2 K multiplied by now it's no more N or the number of observations it is N I based on the observation for each treatment minus 1 multiplied by the square root of MSE over NI similar to the case here and to calculate the confidence interval for the difference between two treatment means mu i minus mu j we take y bar i dot minus y bar j dot as the one for equal samples plus minus t alpha over 2 n minus k similar to when you have equal samples multiplied by MSE over NI plus MSE over NJ where I and J would be the levels of treatment that you are interested in. And there you have it, a mind map or a train map for one way ANOVA. Thank you so much for your attention class and I'll see you in the next video. We'll meet for the discussion of a new chapter.